Hello, I'm Karen Jennings, and welcome to the Fall 1990 edition of Endicott Insight, a video news magazine providing information on our quality products and on significant IBM events affecting our community. The top story across our industry is the announcement on September the 5th of a new product family, the System 390, and some 125 new products. For more on the story, here's Todd Whistler. Unveiled locally at a press conference here at the Glendale Product Laboratory, the announcement was called A New Era in Computing. To IBM, it was our most significant announce in 25 years. Introduced that day was the IBM Enterprise System 9000 family of 18 new processors, including the most powerful the company has ever offered. Endicott's portion of the ES9000 family is the four low-end systems, models 120, 130, 150, and 170. Developed jointly at Glendale and our sister lab in Berblingen, Germany, these models are being manufactured in Endicott and feature Endicott innovations such as technology and a support processor with documentation now in soft copy form. This new family performs as a single integrated system giving IBM customers a hundred times growth in the power and the flexibility to prosper in a world of constant change and intense competition. Other hardware introduced was Micro Channel 370, models 110, 112, and 114. Developed at Glendale and manufactured at IBM Endicott and Valencia, Spain, they are the low-cost System 370 alternative for customers and feature benefits such as double DASD capacity over the 9371 models they replace and the ability to run unattended. Software contributions from the Endicott Programming Laboratory were equally significant. Also announced that day, IBM's premier interactive operating system, Virtual Machine Extended System Architecture, or VMESA. Characterized as the biggest announcement in VM's history, it brings all of VM together in one package. For the first time since the 70s, a single VM operating system runs on all processors in the IBM System 370 and 390 families. This is a really exciting day for the Endicott Programming Laboratory uh, and the VM organization in general because this is the culmination of something that we've been working very hard on over the last couple of years and that's VMESA. VM is used worldwide. It's the, the single most popular operating system uh, in the 370 world and our customers, whether they choose the small uh, models of the ES9000 uh, processors or the largest processors we have, they demand VM. And when they demand VM, they expect VM performance. So when we develop, we have to develop in such a way that the, the operating system spans that entire processor line. That's a key requirement that comes directly from our customers. In keeping our market-driven emphasis, IBM is adopting an innovative means of honing our quality focus by communicating strategies and trends as they happen. To improve our internal communications, IBM is turning to networking, with television, that is. It's called the IBM Communications Network, or ICN. Once online throughout IBM US, our private network will be among the most advanced in the United States. Broadcasts will cover major product announcements, new technologies, news from other locations, and industry news, good and bad. With more about ICN's potential impact on Endicott, here's STD Vice President and Site General Manager Tom Ruan. Soon, IBM will take a giant leap forward in its internal communication strategy with the introduction of its own private television network, ICN. By the middle of next year, the network will be installed at all IBM U.S. plant and laboratory sites, including Endicott. Upon installation, the network will be broadcasting brief daily shows in our hallways, cafeterias, and break rooms. You might ask why IBM needs a TV network at this time. For IBM, the network comes when we need it most. It is more important than ever to open new lines of communication and put the power of information to work for us and our corporation. That is why we are making this investment. By now, you've probably seen one or more of the IBM This Week tapes in our site cafeterias. 
We're making these available to introduce employees to the network and its professional, credible style of reporting. During the next few months, you will be seeing ICN-related activity at the Endicott site. First, survey teams will be on hand, walking through the site with our people to finalize choices for viewing locations. Eventually, they will install the cabling and electrical and mechanical systems necessary to bring ICN reports to you. Please do everything you can to assist the installation effort. The smoother the installation, the sooner we can all take advantage of the network. More details will be made available to you as this installation progresses. I believe this will be worth the effort. We need ICN because the network will help our market-driven strategy come alive by telling the IBM story as it happens with the immediacy and impact only television can provide. Building a product is one thing, but getting it to the customer is another. At Endicott, product packaging is not an afterthought, but part of the design intended to eliminate defects. Our next story concerns one area putting into practice the market-driven principle of defect elimination. IBM products, it's tough out there. Making sure products can make it over the bumps and grinds of the real world is one activity in distribution engineering. By giving our products a rough ride before they go on the road, they provide smooth sailing for customers. What we do is we take a machine, test the machine to find out how rugged the machine is, and then use the information from that test in order to design a package so that we can marry the package and the product together in order to ship it out to our customers in a damage-free condition. Real life conditions are simulated, like a truck jumping railroad tracks or a box falling from a table. To test for potential weaknesses, products are shaken up to 200 times a second, dropped, or slammed into a wall hard enough to produce dents, all to reveal potential defects before the product gets to the final tester, the customer. Sometimes tests go on until the product won't perform its required tasks, many times until it won't power up. Knowing a product's weak points in the development stage can influence design and ultimately eliminate defects. We, we work early on with our development engineering groups and manufacturing engineering, manufacturing and all the, the key groups in order to, to influence some design changes so we can make things that uh, are strong enough so that we can cost effectively solve some of the problems that we would uh, see. Typically, product design changes result from rigorous testing. One design change to the 6262 printer reduced by five times the movement in a printer part caused during normal shipping. This modification eliminated the need for a customer engineer to align that part. Occasionally, packaging design relies on a scientific approach and common sense. For example, this foam-filled pallet on wheels is used in a product's early manufacturing stages all the way through customer delivery. Developed at Endicott, this innovation cut by half the size of the product's packaging and the time needed for setup. We're kind of a unique situation because we have to provide shipping containers that structurally withstand the distribution shipping environment, but we also have to make it appealing and easy to work with once it arrives to the customer's office. Because when we send our machine to our customer, really the packaging is the first thing that the customer sees. That is basically the image of IBM gets shown off with that package right away. And uh, the better it works for them, the more convenient it is for them to get it in position. Uh, get it through the doorways and that kind of stuff and the better the machine looks so without scratches and stuff the happier the customer is right from moment one not just day one moment one when he first sees it now reports on other news events affecting our site a six-year-long effort to upgrade all the site's chemical storage facilities culminated recently with the construction of this tank farm, Building 87, here at the North Street site. 
Following a master plan drawn up long before government regulations required the upgrade, the new building brings to three the number of tank farms on site, and it marks the conclusion of the chemical storage project. The new tank farm features a weatherproof enclosure, spill containment areas, devices for gas detection, and leak detection, easy access for operators, and advanced programmable computer controls developed at Endicott. Prior to 1980, the site had about 40 underground tanks. Now, no tanks are underground, greatly reducing the chance of a leak going undetected. Uh, even today, the regulations don't strictly uh, ban the use of underground storage. Uh, but we feel this is a better technology uh, because of the inspectability and uh, the visibility that it provides. Uh, if you do have a problem, you can detect it instantaneously and take precautions to eliminate it from you know, causing any damage to the environment. Employees themselves are lending a hand at reducing impact on the environment. For years, the site has had a voluntary recycling program for non-confidential paper. But when the program was expanded this year, employees far exceeded expectations. Since these containers were distributed, the site has increased its recycling of non-confidential paper by more than 50%. At this rate, it's expected we'll recycle 500 tons this year, up from 320 tons last year. For confidential paper, site recycling totals remain at about 370 tons a year. Combining the two programs, that's about 870 tons of paper recycled a year, or nearly 15,000 trees saved. On a final note, employees are reminded to dispose of only white paper in the confidential recycle bins and containers. Send view foils, photos, and typewriter ribbons and other material via internal mail to Department 521 Endicott. Use the pre-printed envelope available through stationary stores. By the way, in our previous edition of Endicott Insight, we showed this segment with colored paper mistakenly being used in non-confidential recycle boxes. As we all know, only white paper is acceptable. To those of you who spotted this and noted it, we thank you. age of television and communications at computer speeds, we still depend on the printed word. As a means of sharing ideas and archiving valuable information, there's often no substitute for writing. In our final segment, we look at one way Endicott recognizes employees who put their actions on the job into words. It's called the Endicott Authors Recognition Program, and this year marks its 10th anniversary. To recognize the 742 Endicott employees who participated, an awards luncheon was held at the Fieldhouse. A total of 83 authors received a record 91 level awards as a result of accumulating 12 points per level. Featuring site executives and former Reagan speechwriter Peggy Noonan, the event underscored the program's significance. We have a lot of technical people at this site, and I think a program like this uh, prompts them to do more writing than they might do ordinarily. And I think that's important for both the Endicott site, the corporation, and the individuals. Definitely, we're getting some good work. The first such program in the company, and now used as a model for other locations, the program helps employees by giving them a monetary incentive and it helps the company because employees can build on the work of others when that work is a matter of record. To me, documenting is, is an important part of the project as in some ways doing the work. So if you view documentation as sort of the conclusion of the, of the project, then it's sort of a natural ending. Publication forces an author to uh, adopt a discipline in refining and developing one's ideas and um, submitting them for peer review among other, among other scholars and practitioners. Um, that's invaluable. Um, it's, it's not the kind of, of uh, feedback and input that you get on a day-to-day -day basis on the job. A lot of people do good work. It should be documented. It should be out there for both uh, internal people to have a hold of, also external work, because that way you make your contacts with external people in other companies, universities, 
And from that, IBM can also gain a lot of information. And the other incentive, of course, is the uh, monetary awards that they do provide us for, which is quite nice. It's a little added incentive. I think the program is a very good program. I think it's very well received here at the Endicott site by both the technical community and upper level management. The management team at the Endicott site is extremely supportive of the Authors Recognition Program. And the technical people are very, very happy with it. That's it for this edition of Endicott Insight. If you have any comments, please send them to Insight, Department 612, Building 24 Endicott. With profs, the address is insight at ENDVM5. As always, your comments help us gauge how video might be used in the future. For Insight, I'm Karen Jennings. Thanks for watching.